30-year-old avid horse rider and bakery manager, Megan Kramer, came into the Moor's life about five years ago. She'd been looking for a suitable place to stable her horses. The Moors lived on the outskirts of Cape Town, South Africa, in an isolated rural area called Philippi. Megan quickly fell in love with the 49 hectare farm and the rare peace and quiet so different from the hustle and bustle of the city of Cape Town. She gravitated towards the Moors and over the years became like a family member. She would often bring them her freshly baked chocolate croissants and other delicious pastries from work. Each of the Moors would get a present on their birthday, and Mum, Linda Moore, would receive flowers every single Mother's Day. Between working at the Woodstock Bakery, Megan was studying her Master's in Microbiology at UCT, the University of Cape Town. Her friends often joked, telling her that she looked a lot like Meredith from the medical television series Grey's Anatomy. One person Megan was particularly close with was Linda Moore's own daughter, Nicola. She'd moved into a cottage just a few hundred metres from the main farmhouse, and the girls connected over Harry Potter movie marathons, cake and tea. Megan had always said that they were like the same person. On Saturday, August 3rd, 2019, Megan was snuggled up and ready for bed with her new dog, a Jack Russell. Around 6pm, someone spotted her leaving the cottage, which they thought was odd. Megan usually didn't go out at night after she'd gotten home from work. A short while later, the Moors noticed her Jack Russell running around outside alone. Megan and her white Toyota Aurus were gone. All calls to her cell phone were unanswered. That evening, a roadblock had been set up in Weinberg by the traffic service. It was close to the Woodstock Bakery where Megan worked. A colleague of Megan's saw her car at the roadblock, instantly recognising it with its distinctive Neisner licence plate number. Inside the car were three men he did not know. He ran up to the officials and the men with Megan's car. He asked them where she was, but they just looked at him and said, Who's Megan? He told them that this was her car. He said he knows this because he drives it twice a week for work but they all said that he was lying. Even the traffic officer didn't believe him. He laughed and called him crazy when he asked him to search the boot or trunk, whichever one you want to call it. But Megan's co-worker was adamant and eventually convinced the officer not to let the guys go until he had gotten hold of Megan. However, his phone wasn't working, so he had to go back into the bakery to make the call. His call too went unanswered. As he came back out to the roadblock, he saw Megan's car was gone and the officers were packing up. Megan never returned home or showed up for work. Eventually, the three men her colleague had seen were arrested on possession of Megan's stolen vehicle. All three men turned out to have criminal records. Shiraz Jafta, 34, has a pending murder charge and prior drug conviction. Charles Daniels, 39, has a pending theft case and a prior drug conviction. Jeremy Sias, 27, has a prior car theft case and an assault conviction. There was still no trace of what happened to Megan, yet on Monday, the 5th of August, money was drawn from her bank card. CCTV footage was pulled and it became clear that a fourth suspect was still at large. A screenshot of a man using Megan's bank card circulated between family, friends and detectives. No one recognised the man initially, but later people started saying, we know this guy. He's one of these gangster types. He's involved in gangs and drugs. The stomachs of Megan's loved ones dropped as they started to suspect the worst. Five days after her disappearance, or as now seemed more likely, Abduction, Jeremy Sias led the police to a sand mine where they discovered Megan Kramer's beaten and bound body. She was fully clothed, but it is yet to be determined if she had been sexually assaulted. Her nose had been broken during her brutal attack until she had given the men the pin to her bank card. 
there is reason to believe that Megan's kidnappers and murderers are members of the Six Bob Gang, a group who specialise in hijackings and car theft. It seems Megan's killing was part of a gang initiation for Jeremy Silas, who allegedly joined the gang recently. As he was looked further into, it turned out that Silas was closer to Megan as he worked on a farm close by as a labourer. He had grown up in the area and being just three months younger than Nicola Moore, the two used to play together. People soon found out that Linda Moore's son, Grant, had Jeremy Sias as a friend on Facebook. Grant started getting accused of being involved and was receiving death threats. One person in particular had said if he ever saw Grant in person, he would kill him. The Moors were shocked and devastated by the loss of Megan at the hands of someone that they know and horrified by the threats towards Grant, who would reportedly never hurt a fly. Outside the Athlone Magistrates Court, hundreds of women wearing black opposed bail to the three men behind bars. They were all chanting, no bail, rot in jail. Over 60,000 online petitions were signed within three days to keep the men locked up. Japter had been arrested on car theft and defeating the ends of justice. Daniels was arrested on car theft and defeating the ends of justice. Silas was charged with armed robbery and the murder of Megan Kramer. The case has now been postponed until October 16th for further investigation. In the meantime, People have been commenting on various social media posts about the case. Many believe all the media attention for the Six Bob gang will now only help Silas within the gang. They believe he will be promoted and find safety and security within the prison. He will have a good life in prison on the backs of the taxpayers. Everyone is frightened, wondering if these are the inhumane acts during the initiation stage of the Six Bob gang what are the acts thereafter? What are they getting trained for? No one is safe anymore. Statistics show that a woman is murdered every three hours in South Africa, a country with a mere 3% conviction rate. I can't see through my tears. I don't know how I'm going to carry on without you, Nicola Moore said. There was so much we still had planned on our bucket list and I've started crying again, remembering that you won't be able to do them. I can't believe that you're gone. I'm sorry I never got to say goodbye, and I'm sorry that I never will. We are all sorry, Megan. We're all sorry. I would like to thank the following references while I was investigating this case. News 24, Voice of the Cape Radio, the Daily Voice, The Weekend Argus, and The Cape Times. Do you have a true crime obsession like me? Have you ever listened to true crime podcasts and wondered why there is no voice for South African victims? Well, that voice is here. True Crime South Africa covers solved and unsolved South African true crime cases. Each episode is a deep dive not only into the mechanics of the case, but more importantly, into the victim's story and who they were as human beings. True Crime South Africa is available on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Our content is waiting to be discovered by you. <laughs>